Ladies and gentlemen, this Red Gamer Twitter.com video, we have news from AMD, and they are set to release the FX 9590 and the FX 9370, and this will return us to the gigahertz race as we break the 5 gigahertz barrier. So, the 9590 hits 5 gigahertz with a maximum turbo core clock, and the FX 9370 has 4.7. Now, before everyone jumps on this and gets extremely excited, there are a few problems. And by a few problems, it's primarily heat um, and power. The power requirements of this are 220 watts just for the CPU. And when you consider that their previous high um, wattage part, which would be the Phenom 2 X4965, um, was only 140. And for Intel, of course, recently, they've been hitting under 130 for most of them, with one or two hitting 150. Obviously, this is mostly back in the NetBurst era, so quite a while ago now. So when you consider, you're looking at about 76% uh, increase um, relative to the uh, FX 8350, and that gets you uh, just a smidgen 19% increase in a maximum clock speed. AMD, of course, are going to be releasing Steamroller at some point this year. So I guess for now, this will just have to um, make do with this, but I suppose things are a little bit weird right now in terms of CPUs, because previously, Intel were the ones who were going for the really, really high-end clock speeds, and of course, we paid the penalty in terms of heat and power. Recently, Intel have been, uh, well, improving their power requirements, and Haswell isn't actually that much of an improvement over IV and even Sandy Bridge, but... Well, at least in terms of performance, but in terms of power and heat, of course, it is a significant improvement, as well as the GPU embedded within. And meanwhile, however, AMD, back in the day, used to uh, bang wax lyrically about just how important heat and power were and efficiency. Now, of course, they are going for the pure gigahertz. Now, we don't actually have benchmarks right yet, but when you consider that you can already overclock these type of CPUs to 4.8 to 5.2-ish on air cooling without too much trouble anyway, I suppose it's just a natural extension and evolution of the fact that AMD are basically taking advantage of their own uh, hardware. Now, as of right this second, we don't actually have either benchmarks or pricing for this, but... Well, we can guess, of course, that they're going to be a little bit more expensive, but maybe replace previous CPU's price points eventually in the long term. As I said, we're going to be seeing um, new generations of CPU coming up later this year. So just, is it worth you buying? This is going to be really up in the air. Currently, there is no doubt about it that AMD typically lose out, although there is some expense some specific advantages they do have against uh, Intel CPUs, but mostly they're losing out, of course, to Intel. So I guess they just want to throw out the best performing CPU they can, but I think many people now, if they've not jumped on one platform or the other, are probably going to wait um, for the next generation of AMD CPUs or possibly go with Intel Haswell. Regardless, it'll be interesting to see the benchmarks and if they've changed anything significantly in terms of maybe cash or whatever. Right now, I can't seem to find any evidence either way. So um, as far as we understand it, they haven't uh, changed it, but obviously this has not been confirmed or debunked yet. So I guess we'll see in just a couple of days. Regardless, 5 gigahertz is now upon us, and we'll just see what difference it makes when the reviews come in, I suppose. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I will see you soon. Take care, and bye for now.